Hello, this is Aline White Swan. Welcome to the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace and our Barbara Steele birthday special. Barbara Steele's birthday is December 29, 1937, though she probably wouldn't like me giving away her age, though she looks really good. And she is my favorite scream queen, and I think probably for a lot of you as well. And so what I'm going to show you in honor of her birthday is one of her color films called The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock or The Terrible Dr. Hitchcock. You know, she doesn't have much left that I would put on this channel because um, I've got all the Italian horror ones up that I like. An Angel for Satan was taken down. I don't like terror creatures from the grave, so I'm, I'll only show it if I, I've got no other choice. But this one is pretty good, and it's very stylish the way it's done. And of course, it stars Barbara Steele. Directed by Ricardo Frida, who was born in Alexandria, Egypt, of Italian parents, and educated in Milan, he became a sculptor, then a newspaper art critic. He began a career in film in 1937 as a screenwriter and production supervisor. He moved into directing in 1942, beginning a career that lasted 40 years, um, and he resisted the strong neorealism in post-war Italy and continued making historical spectacles, which he became somewhat a master of. And he um, was a pioneer in Italy of horror fantasy films, especially with Lust of the Vampire and the horrible Dr. Hitchcock. Here's our director. Now, Barbara Steele is our star, and she plays Cynthia Hitchcock. And, of course, she got her career started with Black Sunday of Mario Bava, and then went on to make several of these wonderful Italian gothics. And, of course, the, the terrible Dr. Hitchcock or the horrible Dr. Hitchcock was made in 1962, so it's actually one of her early ones though it is in color. And I think you'll enjoy her in this, you know, there's a, it's just a really um, interesting film and has lots of wonderful sets and costumes and uh, just a kind of an interesting storyline. The terrible, horrible Dr. Hitchcock is played by Robert Fleming and Robert Fleming is from Liverpool, England. And he was actually known for doing a lot of stage work and doing comedies. So it's really funny to watch him in this role because he is very terrible and horrible in this role. But often comedians make the best dramatic actors or villains because they have so much fun with those parts. And he has an OBE, so he is quite a highly regarded actor in the UK. Then we have a very handsome actor called Silvano Tranquilli, who plays the doctor. And... He was also in Castle of Blood, um, and something called The Bloodstained Butterfly, which I never heard of. But he uh, was really well known as a character actor and in television shows, like he's got that sort of handsome detective kind of brooding thing going on. Now, Maria Teresa Vianello, as Teresa Fitzgerald, plays Mar Margarita Hitchcock. And uh, she was born in Libya, and um, she also was in, you know, I mean, these people, there's not a lot of information about a lot of these Italian actors, except in Italian, uh, but she was in some of those, like the Giants of Thessaly, which I imagine is one of those historical epics Ricardo Frida was a master of. And then we have Harriet Medine, who is the maid, and she was also in The Whip in the Body, and she's a very familiar face. She was in Blood and Black Lace, which um, I, I I'm not sure if I've seen that one. I feel like I have, but I'm not sure. She had a kind of a struggle as an actress, even though she was encouraged by people like Clint Eastwood to pursue a career. But she sort of never really made it until in the 60s she got into the Italian horror boom 
And because she was an English speaker, because she was teaching English actually in Italy, she got uh, cast as housekeepers and things like that in these films. But she's always very interesting and is kind of sinister, sort of made a little the Helga Linne roles, but not quite as attractive as Helga Linne. But anyway, but you'll recognize her as one of those faces that you see all the time. So that's all I'm gonna say for Barbara Steele's birthday. I hope you enjoy looking at pictures of her from when she's really young and through some of her movie roles. It's not all of them. And I really hope you have fun for Barbara Steele's birthday and I hope you enjoy the terrible or horrible Dr. Hitchcock. And I also hope it stays up. So <laughs> have a good one. Thank you, bye-bye. You won't feel anything. It'll be just as if you were asleep. Prepare the injection, please. Hurry, we must operate before the heartbeats quicken up again. I don't know how long my anaesthetic will last. Very variable. Scalpel. Ah. 
I must hurry. My wife has guests and she'll never forgive me for being late. Professor. Yes? Excuse me. There's Inspector Scott who wants to talk to you. Yes, of course. Ah, good evening, Inspector. Good evening. Do you think he'll be all right? Well, he's had a very severe blow, but I've done everything possible for him. All we can do now is hope for the best. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Inspector. The professor's done everything he can. So, don't worry. Your father will be all right. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Oh, Martha. Yes, sir? Uh, please tell my wife I'm very tired this evening, and so I'm going straight up to my room. Everything's ready upstairs, sir. Thank you, Martha. I feel very tired. Please, please, please forgive us, my dear. Thank you for a lovely evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Margaret. Thank you. Come again soon.
Yes. Thank you, Doctor. No, no, no. It's it is miracle. only science your father must thank. It's a great victory, Professor. It may not be a miracle, but it has all the characteristics of one. The human body keeps its secrets well hidden. So much time has been wasted in attempts to analyze the soul, while the mechanical, material side of our beings remains an unknown universe. If you hadn't been able to get that slowing up of the heartbeat, the operation could never have been such an overwhelming success. Well, I don't know. Perhaps my anesthetic is only useful because it slows up the general action of the organism. Professor, the patient is ready for the operation. All right. Margaret! Margaret! Ma Margaret! Doesn't it seem strange for the doctor to bury his wife in his laboratory? Yes, but you must admit the good doctor's a little strange himself, isn't he?
The carriage is waiting. Thank you, Martha. Have you decided to leave then? Yes, Martha, I have. I can't go on living here. Everything reminds me of her. Everything. I shall leave the house in your charge. All right. Goodbye, Martha. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, where's the cat? Jezebel disappeared. Well, goodbye. anywhere as long as I'm with you. I think we're almost there. Bring up the rest of the bags. In the morning. Yeah. Thank you, sir. A laboratory right here on the grounds. Uh, nature is very prolific. It's only taken a few years to turn this place into a wilderness. Oh, look. There's someone up there. Who can it be? It must be Martha, my housekeeper. It's going to rain. Yes, come along. We must hurry. Wait a minute, Cynthia. I'll strike a match. Professor. Martha, this is my wife. Cynthia, this is my housekeeper, Martha. How do you do? You must excuse the state the house is in, but I only had time to prepare the upstairs rooms. Ah. Would you like something to eat? Ah, yes. You must be hungry, my dear. Uh, no. I'm just tired. In that case, Professor, shall I show your wife up to her room if she... 
What was that? Nothing. It's my sister. I've had her staying with me here. But tomorrow I'm taking her to an asylum. She's quite mad. Come on, dear. I'll go upstairs with you. Why does Martha look at me in such a strange way? Oh, Martha may appear a little odd, but you'll soon get used to her. Come along. When we get some proper light, it'll be much more cheerful. It's beautiful. Was it here that she used to sleep? Yes. Forgive me, but this house has such a strange effect on me. It's so hostile. I I'm scared by all kinds of things, even the cat. You're just very tired. You'll feel quite differently tomorrow. Of course. Now, Martha will bring up your bag, and if you need anything, there's a bell behind your bed. Thank you. Good night, my love. Good night. Is that you?
morning, my dear. Good morning. Now sit down. How do you feel? I didn't sleep well. How is that? You didn't uh, hear anything last night, did you? No. Why? After you left me, I'm sure somebody tried to get into my room. But that's absurd, my dear. Who could possibly do that? I don't know, but I saw the door handle turn and heard footsteps. Oh, come now, Cynthia. You were very tired last night. Perhaps you just imagined it. There was someone at the door, I assure you. Oh, rubbish, Cynthia. My room is next to yours, and I heard nothing at all. I'm sorry, my dear, but uh, going back to the hospital, after all these years, has put my nerves on edge. Forgive me. Yes? There's an orderly here from the hospital. He wishes to speak to you and says it's urgent. Excuse me, my dear. to a concert tonight. Be ready about eight. All right. up there. Why is this door locked? It's always been locked. Magnificent performance. Really. What did you Don't think? you think it was really good yes, all-round performance? Yes, as round as a soprano's figure. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, there's an emergency at the hospital. Thank you. Would you excuse me, my dear? I'm afraid I have to go to the hospital at once. Would you see my wife home and then join me at the hospital? With pleasure. Good night. Good night. Shall we? from New York when the professor returned home. And I was lucky enough to find a position here. I've always followed his experiments with great interest. Oh, really? Don't think that because I married Bernard, I know about medicine. I wouldn't know, but since you married the professor, you are interested, it seems. You are, aren't you? Why, of course. Find it too boring? No, of course not. May I accompany you to the door? No, thank you. My husband will be waiting for you at the hospital.
to have the pleasure of seeing you again. I will expect you to call on me. Good night. Good night. someone and wondered who it was. Would you please show me to the house? Come. Please take the cat with you. All right. And Martha, will you please leave your sister locked in the lodge? My sister? She was taken to a clinic in Bath yesterday. She's getting old. It shouldn't have happened. The poor woman. What if you'd used your anesthetic? Perhaps you could have saved her. No. I shall never use that anesthetic again. It isn't perfected yet. It's too risky.
going home. She had those boots on. I'm absolutely certain those were the ones, even though I only saw her for a moment, standing in front of my door. All this is utterly ridiculous. Cynthia, you must remember that when I first met you, you had not been well. The shock of your father's death had left you in a highly nervous condition. You seem to be getting over it, but you must not allow your imagination to run away with you. I know it sounds absurd, but I really saw it, Bernard. I actually saw it. I waited all night for you to come in, but I didn't hear you at all. I got back extremely late. Bernard, all these portraits of her, even here in your room. Oh, I know you adored her. But please try to understand. Wherever I go, her eyes seem to be watching, watching me. All right, Cynthia. I must go. And Cynthia, please remember that when I'm not in the house, I do not wish you to enter this room. I'll see you at dinner.
Good morning. How nice to see you. I came to talk to your husband. Bernard's gone out. Is it urgent? Oh, urgent? Not very. Please come in. How do you like London? What's the matter? Do you believe in ghosts? No, I don't. Neither do I. But ever... Since I've been in this house, it's been a constant fear to me. I'm beginning to believe in them. I even saw the folds of a dress and a slipper. Are you sure? It's not possible. You could have imagined it. I knew you wouldn't believe me. But I'm telling you the truth. In your opinion, is Bernard normal? Uh, as much as any man of genius. But why? Oh, nothing. Just an idea. Can't I offer you a drink? No, thank you. I've got to go to the clinic. Oh. Anyway, Cynthia, if I can ever help you, please don't hesitate to, to let me know. Thank you, Kurt. Goodbye. Hitchcock. What do you want, Dr. Lang? Nothing. It's my turn on duty tonight. I heard a noise, but I didn't think it was you. I, uh, I just wanted to check the state of coagulation in this case. But if you just called me, I would have helped you. I didn't know you were on duty tonight. Anyway, it's useless. Come, let's get out of here.
I thought you asked me to look in and say good night. Where have you been? Martha didn't tell the truth about her sister's leaving. She's still here. Have you seen her? Yes, I was up at the lodge and saw her through the window. Her back was turned to me. That's strange. And another thing, Bernard. What's through that door? Which door? The first one there, on the landing. It's my old laboratory, and I wish it to remain locked. Bernard, you've changed so much since we got here. Why can't we leave this house now? I left this house once, and I bitterly regret having done so. I shall not leave it again. Good night.
the same treatment. Someone scratch you, Professor. <laughs> it was Jezebel, my cat. Professor. Yes, Frank? Your carriage is at the door, Professor. Ah, yes, my wife is waiting at home. Frank, do me a favor. Go back downstairs and tell them I'll be there as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Something wrong, Professor? You have no doubt already understood the situation. It's my wife. Your wife? Yes. When I first met her, she'd been undergoing treatment for a shock she'd had. I fell in love with her straight away, and I, I tried to convince myself she was completely cured. She seemed quite balanced to me. A little impressionable, perhaps. She's got it into her head that I don't love her that I'm still in love with my first wife, Margaret. She even thinks that Margaret's ghost is haunting her. It's your fault, Professor. Huh? My fault? Yes. She feels as if she were a stranger in your house. And the fact that you wish everything to remain as it was makes her think that you still love your first wife. Cynthia feels like a rival. And in her subconscious is this question of doubt. But that's absurd. Perhaps I may be blamed for having brought Cynthia back here, but uh, this place is full of memories for me. And not all very pleasant ones, I assure you. But uh, one can't run away forever. To move house would be sufficient. Maybe. How are you feeling, my dear? What's the matter? What happened? What did you do to me? Nothing. We found you lying unconscious in the garden. You've been quite delirious. Look at the state you're in. But... But it's not possible. I'm afraid, my dear, that your nerves have given way again. However, don't worry. You will soon be well.
Yeah? Drink this. It'll make you sleep. Martha, don't disturb my wife. She's not well. Oh, and Martha, I think perhaps you'd better go away for a few days. You understand? You can resume your duties a little later on. As you wish, Professor. Oh, Martha, I shall never forget what you've done for my... for my poor wife. Professor? Yes? It's Frank. Ah. Frank! Where have you been? Where's the bag? There was no one there. No one in the house? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I rang, called, even walked right round the house. Saw no one at all. Excuse me, Professor. Maybe your wife has gone out on a visit. But she never goes out by herself. I must go and see if something is wrong. You understand, don't you? Please take over from me. The moment he wasn't looking, I poured the milk into a flower vase. Could be, Cynthia, that your husband... Surely you don't believe that he... I... I don't know. I don't know, Kurt. I've only got you who can help me. Don't you understand? I've only got you. Yes, Cynthia. And then last night, I awoke in a horrible place. And there was Bernard looking at me like some monster. Suddenly, I saw these hands grabbing him around the neck. It terrified me, terrified me. Then I don't know what happened. I must have fainted. And then? Nothing. This morning I was in my own room and there was Bernard looking at me. I made him think I'd drunk the milk and then I pretended to be asleep. 
I'll have it analyzed, Cynthia. And if the results show nothing wrong, will you admit the absurdity of your suspicion? Anyhow, try to remain calm. Your imagination is much too vivid. Yes, I know. I know it seems real. Cynthia. I was worried about you. What on earth are you doing here? Your wife came looking for you, Professor. In your absence, I entertained her. I see. Well, I think perhaps we'd better go home. Come along, my dear. I sent her away. You mean you've dismissed her? Yes. I didn't think you'd mind. In fact, I thought you'd be pleased. concentration here to kill a horse. Are you sure? Hmm. Three different tests. The same result in each case. The milk you brought me contains sleeping tablets. Enough to give eternal sleep. But, oh, Cynthia. Oh, no. I might be too late.
died down here. When I got out of my coffin, Bernard had gone. He didn't know. He still loved me. It's you. You who must die. <laughs> Just like it always used to be. I will give you back your beauty with this young blood. Yes, kill her, kill her, and then there will be only me. Safe now, Cynthia. The past is burning, and that nightmare is over forever. 